We've talked a lot about the gods and fear and hunger on this channel. In fact, that's a bulk of my content, as there's just so much to talk about. However, we've only discussed around two-thirds of all the gods in depth. We've talked about most of the old gods, like Rogoroth, Freya, and the God of the Depths, and we've also talked about the Ascended Gods, gods with the power of old gods, but with the influence of new gods. We've discussed Almer, the God of Fear and Hunger, and there's debate whether Logic is an Ascended God or not, but we've discussed her too. Then that leaves us with one more category of gods we haven't discussed. And it's not because they're not important, it's just that if I were to discuss them, I couldn't dedicate a whole video to just one of them like I have been doing with the other gods. Because if I were to talk about, let's say, Chambara, the Tormented One, the whole video would be something like four minutes long, and that's no fun. So instead, we're going to be talking about all of the new gods in this one video. The new gods are different from the old gods and ascended gods. They are powerful, sure, but nowhere as powerful as the old gods, who are like forces of nature themselves. Gods of destruction are creating things and stuff like that. But the new gods are weaker, with powers more akin to weaker concepts. Despite their great influence, however, their influence tends to die out very fast. So it might be strong for a couple hundred years, but then as people forget about them, their power wanes. But how does one become a new god? Well, anyone technically can, even you. If you live in the Fear and Hunger universe, and if you do, God help you, but any human in the universe can. However, they have to travel to Mahabra, an ancient city buried deep beneath the ground and take a seat on the Golden Throne. What is the Golden Throne exactly, though? Well, we really don't know. However, we do know is that it transports you to the other side. Or the void, depending on who you ask. An almost alien landscape where you meet yourself as a new god. Or in some cases, for reasons we don't understand, sometimes when you sit on the throne, you'll see someone else. In the case of Ending C in Fear and Hunger 1, if you take Lagarde with you and brought him here, he will sit on the throne. And if you go to the Void after that, he will be there, instead of a new god version of yourself. Perhaps he is so grand and the legend foretold he would ascend the throne, so maybe the throne just thought you three were his vassals or something, I don't know. After you ascend, your religion will spread, and people will know the new god, which brings us to the influence of the new gods and what happens when their influence wanes. For example, the new gods are immortal, right? We see Francois the dominating one, who we will talk about again as an extremely strong and powerful new god in the past. However, in the present, he is frail and weak. You could say that is because now that he has another thousand or so years of knowledge under his belt, but we see his influence gradually died out, and he is very weak because of this. Because his influence is nowhere what it used to be. However, the power and influence is a point of contention, but that's the most accepted idea. However, if you have any other opinion, let me know in the comments. What happens when the new gods are completely forgotten? Well, when the god's influence completely dies out, they are taken to another new place. An enigmatic and non-Euclidean no place known as the Grand Hall. Or as the community affectionately calls it, the Hall of the Gods, in accordance with other fictitious pantheons. This Grand Hall houses every new god that has ever existed. What are they waiting for here? Who knows? Perhaps they are waiting for the end of time. Or perhaps they are waiting for people to discover them again in the human world so their influence can return, and by extension, so can they. There are ways humans can get to this hall, but only temporarily. At least enough time to ask every new god that has ever existed a couple questions. They are very old, after all, so they know a lot of things. Now that we know what new gods are, let's talk about the ones we know. The first ones we hear about are a group from an expedition in the year 809, where five people, known as the Fellowship, made their way to Mahabra and ascended. These are the four new gods we see and interact with most in the series. You may have heard me say that there were originally five members of the Fellowship, but only four ascended. Well, that's because one of them, named Nostromus the Forgotten One, became enlightened instead. But we'll talk more about him in another video. The Fellowship was led by Francois, a conquistador-looking man who possessed the Dominating Soul. Enticed by the Golden Throne and the Golden Palace of Mahabra, he was gifted powers of gold itself. He can spew molten gold and even turn himself into gold, and perhaps even levitate for some reason. After he ascended, he made the Golden Temple, which housed the Golden Throne, a stronghold of sorts. He held himself up in there and ruled over Mahabra with now an iron, or rather, a gold fist. He did his best to make sure no other human could ascend after him. As his influence waned, however, so did his power. As he lived several lifetimes, he also realized the idea of domination is false. However, in his insanity, he believed that he could ascend again somehow, but after hundreds of years, he gave up. 
He eventually was beaten by one of the protagonists of the first Fear and Hunger, or Lagarde. He was then brought to the Grand Hall after his defeat. Nilvian, the Endless One, is a woman who ascended the throne and was given power of transcendence, but a weak form of it, only able to transcend dreams, which she uses at least twice. Once to enact a plan to conceive a child with Lagarde in her dream, and one to tell the protagonist of Fear and Hunger 1 to bring her daughter to the bottom of the God of the Depths. You never actually fight her in Fear and Hunger 1, which is different from the other three we're going to talk about. The plan was for her to bring a child, untainted by hope, to the bottom of the God of the Depths to create a truly pure god. She did this because she realized her reign was coming to an end as her influence was waning. But as the game says, pure darkness cannot breed pure light. It didn't make a new ascended god, but not in the way she wanted. You can see a video on this god here, the god of fear and hunger. Voltaire, the Enlightened One, ascended the throne and was given knowledge as power. Not infinite knowledge, mind you, but at least all the knowledge in the library of Mahabra, which funnily enough, wasn't a ton. He was able to create life to a certain extent. He could make creatures of stone and metal to come to life and do what he wanted them to do. After hundreds of years, however, his true goal of enlightenment was not found in the library. So he gave into despair and sulked. He too was ultimately defeated by one of the Fear and Hunger 1 protagonists and then was ordained to the Great Hall but not before canonically telling Enki about false enlightenment. The final member of the Fellowship, and my personal favorite new god, Chambara, the Tormented One. Cause look at him, he's so fucking cool looking. He ascended the throne and was skinned and given chains in his flesh. He was also given the power to inflict the same things on others. Despite this, however, he was the most sane of the new gods, still upholding the values he had as a human. He was eventually defeated by the Fear and Hunger 1 cast. However, he can be summoned again and fought in Fear Hunger 2 if you're weird. Now, if you're especially attentive and astute, you'd realize that the four new gods of the Fellowship are ironic. The title of each of them is not true. Francois realized there is no such thing as true domination and couldn't keep people out of the throne room. Nilvian realized that she wasn't endless and she tried to continue her legacy by any means possible. Valtail had all this knowledge yet he couldn't reach true enlightenment, and Chambra, despite his looks, is the least mentally tormented of the four, as he is quite normal and kind, actually. Those four are my favorite new gods, however, there are five or six more that we know of. The first is Batel, or Betel, I don't know, an old god in enlightenment. We don't know too much about him other than he was also a god of enlightenment. He is the one who started the library in Mahabra. Once again, ironically, he was outsmarted by the next god of enlightenment, Nashra, the enlightened one also known as the Great Eastern Wizard. I have a whole video on him here, but the spark notes are that he is a far more powerful than most other new gods, as his influence is still around to this day thousands of years later. He was never ordained to the Great Hall, probably because his influence is still around, despite him being a floating head. Here's one that I didn't even mention in my overview of the gods, my most viewed Fear and Hunger video. The Morning One. We see statues of them in Fear and Hunger 1 and 2, however they are only given the name The Morning One in Fear and Hunger 2. Despite this, we know almost nothing about them. It is possible they are connected to Almer somehow, as we see depictions of them near Almer churches usually. Then there are the three new gods introduced in Fear and Hunger 2. It is possible, and even likely, they ascended the throne in Mahabra sometime between the events of Fear and Hunger 1 and 2. So somewhere between 1600 and 1900-ish. The first one, the Heartless One, a new god hated by the other new gods. She in turn hates them back, however, calling them senile old farts. You can fight her in Fear and Hunger too. It's also possible that she was famous before she ascended. You can see movie posters with the Heartless One in Prehubal. So perhaps she was an actress, or maybe this film was just about her life, I have no clue. But she clearly has influence. If we follow the naming scheme of the new gods being the exact opposite of the title, Maybe the Heartless One is really kind, despite how she presents. Maybe she really cares for people, or her fellow new gods, and is acting or something. The Radiating One, who can only be summoned by sacrificing a photo of a person with their face scratched off. Doing so, you can give him rust-colored pearls from Rare's Realm and he'll give you cool items, like the Crow Mauler Mauler. Why does he want these weird rare pearls? I don't know. Maybe he hates Rare, or maybe he's just greedy. But if we follow that naming scheme that the new gods are the exact opposite, the Radiating One should be dull, or perhaps obscured. So maybe he's really secretive, or maybe he's just dull, I don't know. The Tainted One is probably the most important new god in Fear and Hunger 2. 
Sacrificing severed heads to her will give you soul shards, which can create soul stones, which are pretty much skill points. Once again, we know almost nothing about her, but if we follow the naming scheme, maybe she's very pure. This one, I literally have no idea. She seems really sadistic. Maybe she's purely sadistic. Man, I don't know. I barely passed fourth grade. Finally, some new gods that no one ever talks about in lore videos are the Blights. In the Void in Fear and Hunger 1, which is the other side once you ascend the throne, you can find these weird lizard people who in actuality are new gods, just really, really old ones. As before humans, lizard men ruled the earth. These are the ones who ascended the throne at some point. However, they didn't ever really get out of here if they're still here. There's even a greater blight who is this T-Rex guy. Maybe he's a dinosaur that sat on the throne. Hell if I know, but these are technically new gods. Then among these blights, there are the so-called Nine Chromatic Blights, which you can read about in the museum in Fear and Hunger 2, and they are somehow distinct from the normal blights. Maybe they are just different colored lizard gods, as chromatic means produced by color, so who knows. There's also a few more that could be new gods, but it's not really confirmed. It's possible that Percola is a new god, but probably not, as well as some rat god, a wolf god, as well as Yekagetsu, an ancient warrior god worshipped in the Eastern Sanctuary. But once again, none of those four are really confirmed what kind of god they are. But that is all for the new gods. If you want to see more or just want to help me out, please like and subscribe. I love you all, and I'll see you next time.